Welcome to biologyexamsforyou.com. Today we are going to discuss in detail about the steps in recombinant DNA technology. First of all, we will start with definition. In this video, we will be going through all the processes in detail. Recombinant DNA technology is a technique that is used to refer identification, isolation and insertion of gene of interest into a vector such as plasmid or bacteriophage to form a recombinant DNA molecule and production of large quantities of that gene fragment or product encoded by that gene. We'll be going through different steps in detail in this presentation. First of all, let us have a look into the synopsis of the steps in recombinant DNA technology. Step one, it is the identification and isolation of gene of interest or DNA fragment to be cloned. Second, we have to introduce this isolated gene into a suitable vector. Then we need to introduce this vector into a suitable host. The process is called as transformation. We need to select the transformed host cell and finally our intention multiplication or expression of the introduced gene inside the host. So let us move into the first step that is identification and isolation of gene of interest. In recombinant DNA technology, from where we get this gene of interest? There are different resources for uh, getting our gene of interest. This includes a genomic library, cDNA library, chemical synthesis of a gene if we know the sequence, if the number of copies of a particular gene is very less, not sufficient for gene cloning, we can amplify that using polymerase chain reaction, a gene amplification technique. So in order to understand all this step concept, let us take an example. Here we are going to introduce human insulin gene in bacteria. Step 1, from genomic library, we have taken human insulin gene. As I mentioned, genomic library is a source from where we get our gene of interest. So step 1 is, I have taken human insulin gene from genomic library. Step 2, I need to insert this desired gene, that is the insulin gene, into a suitable vector. Before that, we need to know something about vector. What is a vector? Vector is any DNA molecule that has the ability to replicate inside the host to which our gene of interest has integrated for cloning. Vectors include plasmids, bacteriophage, pac yak, etc. You can refer our video gene cloning vectors for more. So, most often, here we are taking plasmid as our vector. Plasmid uh, ha, is extra chromosomal DNA uh, that is present in bacteria. This is E. coli bacterium. I have isolated plasmid from E. coli bacterium. This is a plasmid vector. So this is my gene of interest. This is our gene of interest that is a human insulin gene. So first of all, we need to make a cut in the vector using a restriction enzyme. Restriction enzymes are enzymes that are capable of making internal cuts at specific sites in a DNA molecule. So we need to incorporate our insulin gene into this vector. So what we did was we I made a cut using restriction enzyme and now I have the gene. So I have incorporated my insulin gene into the vector uh, and I seal that gene. The cutting ends with the enzyme ligase. Now we have the recombinant DNA molecule or chimeric DNA. A recombinant DNA molecule is a DNA molecule from which uh, DNA are from different sources. You can see right here we have a recombinant DNA molecule with human DNA and bacterial plasmid DNA mixed together. So just recombinant DNA molecule is just a recombined DNA molecule from different organisms. So second step is over. We have inserted our human insulin gene into a vector. Now the third step, introduction of this vector into a suitable host. There are different gene transfer methods by which we can introduce our vector into a host. These are some of the methods, electroporation, microinjection, liposome mediated gene transfer, uh, silicon carbide fiber method, etc. And hopefully we will be discussing all these later. And chemical gene transfer methods are there, PEC mediated gene transfer, calcium chloride mediated gene transfer, dextran mediated gene transfer or certain cells like bacteria are capable of taking up gene from the surroundings. The process is called as transformation. So now our, our insulin gene, we have our insulin gene incorporated in the vector. So we need to introduce this insulin gene into a host 
Most often the host is a bacterial cell as it is uh, simple to manipulate and we know E. coli bacterium very well. So I have introduced my vector with my gene of interest into bacterial cell. Now we have a genetically modified E. coli with our insulin gene inserted inside the vector. So step 3 is over. The process is called as transformation. Now step 4 after this uh, step 3 we will be getting three types of colonies non-transformed bacterial cell without any change and transformed bacterial cell with unaltered vector vector is there the cell has transformed but without our gene of interest and finally the transformed bacterial cell with our recombinant vector and this is the cell that we need to take and this is the colony we need to select and this is we need to select this particular colony from the rest majority of the colonies belongs this to these two groups so there are different ways by which we could select these uh, maybe by growing in antibiotic resistance in a selective medium uh, or this gene may be coding for some characters that are visible or maybe if it is an enzyme we will be adding some substrate we will be getting some color in some colonies in which we will be having our gene of interest maybe by calling hybridization, blotting test, etc. For antibiotic resistance selection in recombinant selective medium, you can refer uh, our video gene cloning vectors. Final step is multiplication or expression of the introduced gene in the host. So as I mentioned in the first slide, our intention is to make as many copies of that particular gene or I need to make uh, that gene product to be synthesized inside the bacterium. So we have genetically modified E. coli with our insulin gene and this plasmid will replicate inside the host and this bacteria will also replicate making millions of copies of this particular gene. My first, Our first intention is achieved. We have our gene of interest produced in millions of numbers. Our actual, our actually our intention was to synthesize insulin inside E. coli. So this is what is happening. This E. coli gene that will be transcribed and translated later protein product is synthesized inside the bacterium. So expression that is uh, the term that is insulin is synthesized in bacterium. Now by recombinant DNA technology insulin is synthesized. The name of that insulin is called as humulin. Humulin is synthesized by recombinant technology. Here we are using the same procedure we are making bacteria as big biofactories for synthesizing human insulin inside. Yeah, and so we need to culture this in large scale for getting large scale production of insulin. Hope everything is clear. If you have any questions, comments or suggestions, uh, we are happy to hear from you. And you are with biologyexamsforyou.com. Please do us a favor. If you find this video useful, please share and like. Thank you so much for watching.